Welcome to the 14th annual Catherine W. Davis Global Community Scholars Presentations of Community Service Projects. For those of you who don't, don't know me, my name is Kent Trickle, and I am an associate professor in the English, ESL, and Reading Department at Westchester Community College. Over the last 14 years, I've also had the pleasure of co-directing the Davis Program with my colleague, Dr. Lori Maida, professor in the Sociology Department. As many of you know, Mrs. Davis's generous donation made the creation of this program possible back in 2007. Eight years ago, the Davis family added to that generosity with an additional $2 million donation in order to continue the program in Catherine W. Davis's memory. And so here we are now celebrating 14 years of providing full scholarships and service learning opportunities for over 280 students from the US and dozens of other countries around the world. But this year was somewhat different from the 13 years past. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit last spring, our primary concern was for the health and well-being of our students. And as a result, the community service projects for the 2019-2020 cohort were canceled before reaching their conclusions. When we began remote interviews over the summer, I had my doubts about how successful the program could be in the remote environment. After all, the Davis program is all about community, and we're, we were all physically isolated in our homes. It was hard to imagine how we could replicate the synergy of the Davis program without ever being in the same room together, not to mention the obstacles for conducting community service. In the year that has followed, there have been many challenges for all of us, but I can personally attest to the resilience of our scholars and their commitment to academics and service. After a grueling interview process conducted entirely remotely, the 2020-2021 cohort began meeting in weekly Zoom sessions starting last September. We all know that the remote environment is not always ideal, but these scholars made it work. From the first day, their enthusiasm and commitment were on full display. Our doubts about synergy fell away as the scholars exchanged their ideas, supported each other and began quickly to coalesce into service groups with some brilliant project ideas. We are very proud of the accomplishments of all the students who have come through this program over the years, but we are especially proud of how hard these scholars have worked during some pretty tough conditions. Once again, this group of scholars represents diverse backgrounds and experiences coming from the United States, Albania, Brazil, Czech Republic, Dominican Republic, France, Germany, Ghana, Mexico, Poland, Scotland, South Korea, and Sweden, if I didn't miss any. Throughout the year, these scholars have demonstrated not only their academic excellence, but also their commitment to service and collaboration through planning and implementing their service projects. Many of our scholars have now graduated from WCC and begun moving on to their next stages in life. Some have already been accepted as transfer students at institutions like Iona College, Columbia University, and two year sorry, and TU Burke Academy in Freiburg, Germany, among others. Some will continue a little longer at WCC and some will begin their careers and join the workforce. No matter what they choose to do, we expect these scholars to be successful in their endeavors. And we hope that their experiences are, as scholars in this program have left them better prepared to meet the challenges ahead. We certainly are proud of them and we think you will be too when you see this sampling of what they have accomplished. We are again grateful to Mrs. Davis and her family and the WCC Foundation for giving us the opportunity to work with these extraordinary students over the last 14 years. It has truly been one of the most profoundly satisfying experiences of my career at WCC. So without further delay, I present to you the 2020-2021 Catherine W. Davis Global Community Scholars. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Amber Cabrera. I am majoring in social sciences and I was born in the Dominican Republic. Our group is Mentoring Your Minds. Now I'll give the time to my colleagues to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Fatima Juarez. I am majoring in nursing and I was born in the United States. Hi, my name is Sophia and I'm majoring in nursing and I was born in Ghana. Hi, my name is Maria Booker. I am majoring on culinary arts and hospitality management, and I was born in Mexico. 
Our group, along with Westchester Jewish Community Services, is to inspire and prepare girls that are members of the Wiener Academy for young women in grades four through eight to reach their full potential through academic support and activities designed to build character, enhance social development, and promote health and wellness. Our vision is to inspire young girls to develop into knowledgeable, confident, ambitious women prepared to courageously navigate through any challenges and to prepare them to become exemplary citizens in their community and in the world. Currently, due to COVID-19, it has led to the closure of the Yonkers School District and switched to remote or hybrid academic schedule. Our project has pivoted to a hybrid model where we are serving girls in grades four through eight for the month of January to the first week of June. We are addressing the academic and social emotional wellness of our mentees. Activities include homework help and support, individual tutoring, computer skills, and a variety of enrichment activities. Visual mentoring is a free one-to-one -one digital mentoring program that pairs eligible children in grades four to eight with each member of our group as mentors for online learning two times a week, one hour each section. Register Jewish Community Services has provided a free Chromebook and a one year of free Wi-Fi to the members of this project. Our main goals are to help the girls navigate online learning, reinforce good digital learning routines, offer online homework support, engage the girls in free online enrichment, be a role model to the girls. Rochester Jewish Community Services trained us on January 6th and 7th, where we learned different techniques on how to help or handle the girls' needs through academic to social emotional approaches. Once the program started, we have been attending weekly meetings with one advisor from WJCS on Wednesday to give an update from our experiences with the girls during the mentoring session. Each month, there is a meeting with the head of the Rainer Academy for Young Women for updates or modifications to the project. In addition to the tutoring, we were given sets of books to label with the corresponding Spanish translations. This was done every two weeks for a period of five months. Once the books were labeled, WGCS was in charge of distributing these books to members of the program. These are some examples of the work we have been doing in the past few months. Once they have completed their school assignments, we're able to do some activities such as games like hidden picture puzzles or cooking lessons. This is some of the feedback and thoughts from our program coordinators during the course of this program. Given the challenging times that most of us have faced this past year, we believe that this project is providing a safe space for the girls to get the help they need for their academic and emotional issues. We're committed to the program and are confident that our support is leaving both, the mentees and ourselves, a long lasting remarkable experience. We would like to express our gratitude to the Catherine W. Davis and the Davis family Professor Kent Trickle and Dr. Lori Meira, Westchester Jewish Community Services, Amy Knox and Jessica Pisic, the director and coordinator of the virtual mentoring program, the Winner Academy for Young Women, our mentees and our mentees families. Thank you for your attention. Hi, welcome to our presentation. Our group is health education and awareness of mental health and addiction. My name is Allison Komar. I'm a nursing student and I was born in the United States, specifically Connecticut. My name is Danielle Delise. I'm a liberal arts, math and science major at Westchester Community College and I was born in New York. My name is Olivia Coe. 
I'm a fashion design and technology major, and I was born in South Korea. And our fourth member is Moon Na, and she is an arts and science major. This project was important to all of us. We think it was important to talk about mental health, especially during this pandemic, when mental health and addiction has gotten worse. No one should underestimate the power of simply talking about these issues and working through them with others. Oftentimes, people view mental health as less serious than physical illnesses because of the stigma society places on it and the lack of understanding. This also caused people to be less forthcoming when they were suffering from mental illness or addiction. We think it was great that we had this opportunity to help many people learn about mental health. So our mission statement is, our group's goal was to educate the public and create awareness of mental health and addiction through a public service announcement on a public podcast, The Sober Fanboy. The first thing we did in preparation for this podcast was collaborate with two students from Mercy College. These students served to help us spread our reach and get the word out about what we were doing. They also joined us in the first podcast episode. Next, we researched information on mental illness and addiction, statistics, coping mechanisms, signs that someone is struggling, symptoms, and resources for people looking to seek help after listening to our podcast. We then organized the information so that it would flow more easily when we recorded the actual podcast. This podcast was an open discussion, meaning it was in the form of a conversation and not an interview. This served to give the episodes a free-flowing feel to them, which tends to captivate the audience. In these episodes, we talked about who we are as a group and our purpose. Then we each talked about a coping mechanism, such as reaching out to others, writing gratitude lists, and finding a new hobby. At the end, we each had the opportunity to present a question to our host, John Jeremy, who is extremely experienced in these areas. One question was what he was doing when he was struggling. There are two podcast episodes, each about 40 minutes in length. This was enough time to give everyone the opportunity to say their piece. John Jeremy was a great host and brought enthusiasm to the group about doing this project. The first podcast episode was released April 20th, and the second was released April 19th. On this slide, though, we have a picture of the flyer that we created that was put on the Mercy's team Instagram page and the post itself. John Jeremy marketed the first podcast on his Facebook page. We learned as a group that it was personally enriching to work together to help for a common purpose and to try to reach out to those who are struggling. It was a great experience to work together to talk about what usually is not spoken about and to reach out to those who are struggling. Knowing that we can reach so many people and potentially give them hope and guidance has given us a sense of fulfillment. We also learned that there were some difficulties working as a group, but we got through them in order to help for a common purpose for those in need. We want to say thank you to a few people. First, thank you to the Catherine W. Davis College Program and to Davis family. Second, thank you to Professor Trickle and Dr. Mira. Third, thank you to the Westchester Community College Foundation. Lastly, thank you to John Jeremy for interviewing us and the two Mercy team mentors, Amy Warmbrand and Angelina Harmillo for helping us with this project. To take a listen to our podcast, search The Sober Fanboy on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts, and listen to the last two episodes produced. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We are Nourishing New York. We will begin with our group introductions. My name is Nicole Bediaco. I am a nursing major, and I am first-generation Ghanaian American. Hi everyone, my name is Draini Sufi. I am an accounting major. I graduate this year and I plan to transfer to a four year school and eventually become a CPA. My name is Valerie Ponte. I'm graduating from WCC this semester with an associate in liberal arts, social science. 
I hope to transfer to York College to attend their BS MS program to fulfill my goal of becoming an occupational therapist. Uh, I'm Katarzyna, but I'm also known as Kasia. I'm in the process of finishing my nutrition and food science associates degree at WCC. I'm looking to transfer to Lehman College this fall and continue my journey of becoming a registered dietitian. Nourish New York mission is to work towards alleviating hunger in New York City and building healthier communities. We plan to do this by distributing nutritious food from City Harvest to people in need. By doing so, we will empower individuals and families to make healthier choices by distributing pamphlets with nutritional advice and recipes to increase awareness of proper nutrition as a key to healthy lifestyle. The topic of hunger in New York City has become a real struggle, especially given the recent pandemic situation for over 2 million New York residents. Out of these 2 million, 686,000 are children, and one in six of them has hunger difficulties. People who are facing hunger are estimated to report needing 1.8 million more per year just to meet their food needs as reported by the USDA. However, the average meal cost is $3.23. So assuming three meals seven days a week, that's 68 weekly on food alone. Comparing this to an average SNAP benefit per person of only 125 per month shows us that there's a significant food insecurity gap. If you refer to our timeline, you will see that our project is twofold. First, we worked together to design a pamphlet that provides individuals with nutritious recipe ideas. The second half of our project is more hands-on. We teamed up with City Harvest to help combat food insecurity. As you can see in December, we attended a virtual online orientation or in order to volunteer at their mobile market in March. In February, we finalized our pamphlet design and in April, we distributed them out throughout New York City. Our pamphlet was designed to provide nutritious options to individuals who rely on food donations. So it was imperative to include food items that are typically distributed at food pantries. When creating these recipes, we made sure to include ingredients like canned goods, whole grains, and produce that have a long shelf life. Next, we distributed the pamphlets at local food banks throughout NYC. The goal of these pamphlets is to educate its recipients and inform them that there are nutrient dense meals that could be easily and completely made from pantry items. As you can see, we have included a sample recipe from our pamphlet. We have been sure to include all of the ingredients, cooking instructions and nutritional value for each recipe in the pamphlet. We also included information and a QR code to help those find access to food discreetly and easily, as well as food intake recommendations suggested by the USDA. City Harvest was founded in 1982 and is now New York City's largest food rescue organization. The organization collects food from various donors and delivers it to hundreds of food pantries and soup kitchens around the city. Today, City Harvest has delivered over 850 million pounds of food to help feed over 1.5 million New Yorkers. Since last year, food insecurity has risen as families struggle to feed themselves while faced with an unprecedented crisis. Despite this challenge, City Harvest has continued their work throughout the pandemic and even ramped up operations to respond to the increased demand. As part of our mission, we volunteered at City Harvest's mobile market in Queens, New York to help families in need. We distributed over 20,000 pounds of fresh produce, including nectarines, cucumbers, carrots, cabbage, and onions to over 400 people in the community. During the event, we were stationed at a market table. We helped stock the stations with produce boxes and guided residents through the market while maintaining safety protocols. We found it really rewarding to interact with the residents who came through the mobile market. This service project yielded many rewarding experiences. At first, the thought of collectively working on a design and content for a pamphlet seemed it may have its difficulties, especially during this climate of COVID aftermath. 
However, our team came together and collectively made this task almost effortless. Our biggest reward came from our experience with City Harvest. People line up for hours for the mobile market, so it has so it was both gratifying and rewarding to work hands-on and see the faces of all those we helped in the community. The recipients were so grateful for our time and efforts. For every one person who tried to get extra help, to get extra helpings, there were 20 people who were just thankful to be receiving such an ample amount of food. As Nicole said earlier, we distributed 20,000 pounds of food that day. Learning this gave our group an immense sense of pride. So in reality, it was the community who gave back to us. We have discussed it and we will definitely be volunteering again in the near future. First, we want to start by thanking Mrs. Catherine W. Davis, who not only provided an amazing opportunity for nourishing New York, but who ignited the light within us to give back to the community. Next, we would like to thank the Davis family, the Westchester Community College Foundation, City Harvest, and last but not least, Professor Trickle and Dr. Maida. All of this would not have been possible without all that you do. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to our group project presentation. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Julia Lindner. I'm an international student from Sweden and I am majoring in marketing. I am a sophomore here at WCC and I will be graduating this semester. My name is Helena Blejova. I'm an international student from Czech Republic, and I'm majoring in anthropology. I'm also a sophomore here at WCC, and I will be graduating this semester. Prior to settling on a service project, we researched the different opportunities available, and we soon realized that we both wanted to take on an opportunity to create a project that would not only be limited to one community, but would positively affect a larger area. The COVID-19 pandemic triggered the idea of focusing on a project that with a health perspective. Even though none of us are within the medical field, combined with our desire of being able to help during the COVID-19 pandemic, the idea of hosting a blood drive was therefore the ideal opportunity for us to contribute to the medical needs in the United States. In fact, every two seconds, someone in the United States needs blood. On a regular annual basis, 4.5 million lives are saved by blood transfusions. Due to the spreading disease of COVID-19, hospitals are experiencing a blood supply shortage. And this leads us into our mission of hosting a blood drive in Hawthorne, New York on March 3rd, 2021 during a worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. With the cooperation of the American Red Cross, we will help support American hospitals with blood supplies that can save lives. During the first two months of meeting with our Davis Scholarship Group, we worked on getting to know each other and got used to the circumstances of having to connect virtually. However, me and Julia connected through the idea of wanting to carry through a project that could contribute positive outcomes to communities heavily affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. After settling on the idea of hosting a blood drive, we contacted the American Red Cross to establish a potential collaboration. And after proposing a plan with the American Red Cross, we started to coordinate the physical event and don't uh, recruit donors. Um, on March 3rd, we hosted a successful blood drive um, with the cooperation of the American Red Cross. And after hosting our blood drive, we finalized the project by collecting results and feedback from the drive. In order to recruit as many donors as possible and then motivate our donors to give blood again, we came up with the idea of designing fun t-shirts with a catchy logo. We wanted to make sure the t-shirts are simple and clean so that the donors could wear them again. After months of teamwork, we were we met for the first time in person. We arrived at our drive an hour and a half prior to the first donor scheduled. During this time, we met with the staff of the American Red Cross and got trained for the assigned responsibilities. Our responsibilities were as follows. When a donor arrived, we welcomed them and took their temperature using a temperature screening kiosk. And thereafter, we asked for the donor's identification and scanned it into the system. 
Once the donor was in the system, we wrote their name on a name tag and placed the name tag on the side of the table, creating a queue system. This procedure helped the nurses to identify which donor had arrived and in which order. The staff of the blood drive consisted of a team of nurses who made sure the medical part was taken care of. Julia and I, who made sure the donors felt welcomed from the start and accommodated through their time there. We made sure to recruit young, healthy, first-time donors. Something we learned is essential for the American Red Cross, especially in the times like this. Since most donors can only donate every three months, it was specifically vital to recruit first-time donors. Initially, we had 41 donors scheduled for our drive. However, five donors ended up being deferred. But fortunately, um, a total of 36 whole units of blood were collected at the end of the day. 36 units of blood that have a potential impact of 108 lives being saved, not limited to Westchester County, but throughout the nation. At the end, we experienced many positive responses from the American Red Cross team. Together with our donors, we were informed that the drive had been very successful due to our commitment of recruiting the high number of donors that we were able to recruit. The area director from American Red Cross, Susan Sommer, arrived at the drive, something she told us she usually doesn't do. However, she wanted to personally thank us for our engagement. As you can see from the attached email, Susan expressed her gratitude towards us. And one of the pictures to the right shows the results from a COVID-19 antibody test, something that all donors were given. Besides the high number of units collected, we also received many positive reactions from donors as well as the staff appreciating the t-shirts we gave them and that we had designed and produced ourselves. The first and most important information we learned during this project is that COVID-19 does not spread through blood. We made sure to inform every potential donor with this information. Many people we, re out we reached out to were not aware of the fact that COVID-19 does not spread through blood and were therefore, after, he after hearing about this information, more confident to donate. However, recruiting donors for our blood drive was very challenging. After hosting a blood drive, we are 100% more knowledgeable about the process and what it actually takes to host a drive. It was in fact a long but giving day of nine hours and Helena and I have improved significant teamwork abilities and have gained a wider respect to people who work within this field, but also to the people who contribute to our communities by donating blood. We are glad to reveal that we accomplished a plan and host a drive impacting over 100 people's lives. We believe that this experience is going to serve as a significant benefit in our future endeavors. On a personal level, this service project has taught me that helping other people is truly a privilege. I am glad that I've been able to utilize this opportunity to not only grow myself, but to help other people who are fighting battles and provide them with means uh, people like you and I may take for granted. For me, I'm happy to proudly say that I have helped the community in these rough times. Thanks to Katrin Davis, I have learned how one person can have such an impact on an entire community. All it takes is passion and commitment. Lastly, we would like to express our gratitude towards Mrs. Catherine W. Davis for giving us this opportunity. We want to say thank you to the Davis family, Westchester Community College Foundation, Dr. Maida and Professor Trickle, the American Red Cross, the American Red Cross nurses, and our blood donors for helping us make this project possible. Thank you for joining us today. Stay healthy and safe. Hi, I'm Christina. Welcome to our project. Here we're looking forward to sharing our enthusiasm in helping others on their financial journey through, financial, through our financial literacy project. Thomas and I believe financial literacy awareness among our peers is vital. Our main motivation is geared to help students who need help with their financial health. We believe the effort to help students in this area of life is the key to financial and mental health. The reason why I partnered up with Thomas on this project was due to my own personal experiences with financial literacy. 
Into my young adult life, budgeting wasn't a thing. Starting out as a single mom with limited resources paved some of my short-term decisions, where even attending college was a challenge. Today, I have learned many budgeting tips and strategies to help others navigate this process and beyond. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you, everybody, for your attention today. My name is Thomas Richel, and I am an international student coming from France. I have been a student at Worcester Community College for the past two years. And it has, it has been an incredible journey so far. My time here comes to an end soon as I will be graduating during summer, uh, summer 2021. Here I study accounting, which directly uh, relates to this project and inspired me to do this project. I would say that financial literacy represents a profound interest to me and having the chance to share it with my peers has been an incredible opportunity. Our goal is to provide financial literacy to Westchester Community College students through interactive online activities and workshops. This provides students with proper financial tools such as budgeting and financial planning to achieve personal, educational, and lifetime goals. Let's face it. We only grow in, in interest in what's familiar, fun, or favorable. When finances come to mind, it may not be the top of the list. It can be a daunting topic for many. Our program is geared for those who want to take control of their finances while in college. After taking an interest in your financial health, it's common to sense a discouragement once you learn the step to financial freedom. With that in mind, we offer interactive tools we make this journey an easier process to navigate. The best way to start any journey is by planning. Even for the most free-spirited and easygoing person, finance is one of those areas where professional support can help ground you into the right direction. Support services such as coaching has helped the most novice to the most experienced individual. In the end, we want students to meet their financial goal, whether it's learning how to budget, establishing good credit savings, creating emergency funds, or create investment plans. We deeply believe that these are all steps needed to achieve financial stability. In our process to create a meaningful project for Westchester Community College students, we have the goal to help them navigate college financially and provide a place where they can find advice, experience, and knowledge to manage their finances during important college years. Of course, during the process, we faced multiple challenges. The first one was obviously the global situation related to COVID-19. Indeed, at a time where it was needed more than ever, we weren't able to reach students on campus as we would have done normally. Another challenge was that too often, financial literacy is a topic that scares people away. And it's often difficult to have people interested in this type of knowledge. To answer these problems, we came up with different solutions. To name a couple, first is the creation of an online environment accessible for all students. Second, we tried to tackle the topic where it matters the most for the students. And that is by delivering a plan and applicable knowledge, a simplified and direct correlation to their journey. As a result, we decided to go for a blog, myeasyfinance.com. One of the advantages of a blog that we liked was the possibility to have a real editorial line. This enabled us to come up with a platform where we could share some educational content about banking, budgeting, and planning, as well as different resources to ease the process, while still having in mind the necessity to share simple and entertaining content based on experience. For us, it is important to try to bring students together around the theme of financial literacy, to measure the enthusiasm and assess how we could further develop the project. As a result, we really wanted to set up an event to meet the students. As the situation regarding COVID looks promising in New York State, we are optimistic about scheduling an in-person event during the upcoming fall 2021, 2021 semester at WCC. The value added of having that face-to-face -face experience is valuable, where we believe this will highly benefit the project. We will provide further details to come as we navigate the upcoming semesters. So far, we have been working with three different departments at Westchester Community College to make this project work. 
Our projects also included the reduction of eight articles based on, ver on various aspects of financial literacy. This reduction was necessary to supply our blog. In the future, we hope to have a solid base of active users and to reach 1,500 visits in the coming months. Regarding our events, we will consider it a success if it can provide the following outcomes, namely 15 stu students involved, which will part participate to the MoneySmart program and up to 2,500 in cumulative savings. Here's a short clip with Ms. Suzanne Matthews, Director of the Center for Financial and Economic Education. Ms. Matthews will briefly touch on the center, what it does for the college, a quick intro about their Money Smart Forum and how it will benefit the students at WCC. Benefit in many ways. First of all, we know that most of the students who come to West Coast Community College have never in their experience had, had an opportunity to learn very important skills around personal financial management. And so what we do is not only educational, but it also tries to help students build new habits for financial wellness. Many students also, uh, unfortunately, find themselves uh, faced with financial emer emergencies and financial hardships. And occasionally, those situations lead to students dropping out of college. And in fact, we know that one of the most frequent reasons why students are forced to drop out of college is because of finances. And so we help students address these challenges head on through the coaching program. We help them come up with a financial plan for college. We help them build those emergency savings that are so important in times of uh, hardship and unexpected events. Uh, and we help them also build other important skills for, for their life, for their lifetimes really, um, increasing savings, reducing debt, and improving the credit score. All of these are important in financial independence. Benefit in many ways. We would like to thank Catherine W. Davis and the Davis family for providing great support through our education. We are sure this project will leave lifelong memories for each and every one of us. We also like to thank Dr. Maida and Professor Trickle for their valuable experience support and the time they provide to help us succeed. A special thank you to Suzanne Matthews and the Money Smart program members and coaching staff. Your work is inspiring and we hope we had a chance to add more value to an exceptional program. Finally, a big thank you to the Westchester Community College Foundation, which kindly manages and creates this financial opportunity. Thank you. Good morning. We are at the C2 Feed at the Garden Around the Corner. I'm Carolyn Martins. I'm from Brazil and I'm majoring in journalism, communications, and media arts. My ultimate goal is to become a news anchor and reporter. Hello, everyone. My name is Laisa Canto. I'm also from Brazil. I'm graduating in May with an environmental science major, and my ultimate goal is to become an environmental educator. Hi everyone, my name is Marley Martinez. I'm from the USA. I'm a performing arts major and my ultimate goal is to become a full-time musician as well as a full-time farmer. We decided to create the Seed to Feed workshops because we all wanted to connect more with nature as well as get more into gardening and growing our own foods. Both Laisa and I have experience in gardening and have experienced how growing your own food can change your life and especially your diet for the better. We met with Judy Morano, who started the garden around the corner in Brewster and became aware of the fact that Brewster faces food insecurity. And this is because there's little access to getting fresh and organic produce in the Brewster and Hudson Valley area. Speaking with Judy solidified our plans for this project as we decided that we would love to support her community garden by creating these workshops with her help. Finally, we all have been struggling with anxiety and hardships during this pandemic from being indoors and not interacting as much with people in real life. After reading a prospective study of existential issues in therapeutic horticulture for clinical depression, we were able to find that gardening in any way, shape or form actually can help lower your stress levels and help with depression. Our mission was to encourage people in the Brewster and Hudson Valley community to grow their own food by holding instructional workshops at the garden around the corner. 
We hope that by presenting these simple methods on how to grow vegetables and herbs, that we could inspire people to participate in sustainable gardening techniques and a healthier lifestyle. In November, we spoke with Judy and started planning for our indoor garden by starting some seeds. Both Laís and I dedicated the time and space to starting our seeds indoors. We spent the next few months working on our workshops and maintaining our garden. In February, we spent a lot of time connecting with organizations and clubs to spread the word about our workshops. Some clubs and organizations that we reached out to were Student Involvement, Creative Communications, and the Community Action Program. CAP works with the garden around the corner to help distribute the fresh produce. We were also able to connect with small businesses in Brewster to share our flyers. In March, we had our first workshop online where we focused a lot on indoor gardening and starting our seeds. In April, we had our second workshop online where we focused more on outdoor gardening and season planning. And in May, we met at the garden for our final workshop where we were able to do some hands-on activities in the garden and distribute some seeds. On March 27th, we had our first workshop where we talked about indoor growing. That covered both cultivating an indoor garden and starting seeds inside to take them outside. For this workshop, Lais and Marley started growing their own herbs, which included cilantro, thyme, dill, and parsley. With that in mind, we opened the workshop explaining what a person needs to know and have in order to start an indoor garden. We talked about the seeds, how to start them, and what it is required in terms of container, soil, the temperature, humidity, and light to germinate them. We also covered labeling and finding the right place to start the seeds and to keep them in their garden. After that, we discussed alternative plants to use for indoor crops, and we finished it talking about microgreens and sprouts and showing techniques to grow them. The second workshop called Soil Preparation and Garden Planning happened on April 17th. It was a remote workshop and we started talking about the basic requirements while we're choosing the gardening site outdoor. We then cover some techniques to build a garden bed like raised beds and no-till gardening. We explained the base compositions of a healthy soil and presented some tasks that can be done to check it. In this workshop, we use three common crops as examples to understand the planting calendar, calculating, calculating the start date and making a planting plan. We talked about direct sow and transplants, and we use real pictures to illustrate some of the procedures. For example, we potting a plant and figuring out the space they require in the garden. We then mentioned the importance of adding flowers in the garden to attract pollinators. And we finished the workshop talking about how to properly take care of your garden and about the basic tools required for gardening. The last workshop called In the Garden happened on May 8th at the studio around the corner. We brought in tools and plants for the hands-on demonstration. And we started talking about the other growing techniques like trellises, growing hay bales, and containable vegetable garden. We discussed succession plantation and crop rotation using again the planting calendar. We also talked about when and how to harvest and how to manage some common passes that can appear in the garden. The last topic was about sustainable techniques. We talked about composition, composting, and explained how it can be done at home. We finished the day showing people some techniques to start seeds in newspaper and toilet paper pots. And everyone went home with some seeds to start their own garden. At the end of all workshops, we provided handouts to the participants so they could have more information to start their own gardens. I like the enthusiasm. It's really helped fill in those uh, blank spots for us. I'm definitely going to use the knowledge that I use today, like for the future. And I got some little babies too, some kale and char. I think that there's a learning curve. And I think you can just dig in and start and make mistakes and learn from your mistakes. But with, some, with a program like this, if we can avoid some of those mistakes and get a healthier garden with better produce, it's wonderful. It was very inspiring for me. I can see the interest and the the um, 
agility that you have as a college student, making a presentation and giving one very easily and very uh, professionally. So I was an honor to work with you. At the end of each workshop, we provided a link to a questionnaire where people could fill out based on their experience. The majority of participants gave us a positive outcome. They learned new things and appreciated all the recommendations given. Based on the outcome of those workshops, we've achieved our main goal and were able to inspire people to start their own garden. According to a study done by the University of Washington, a dose of nature at home could help mental health and well-being during COVID-19. Throughout the past year, I've encountered many challenges and changes due to the pandemic. Therefore, engaging in gardening, providing information to others, and connecting myself with nature turned out to be something that helped me evolve as a person. Through creating these workshops and practicing indoor gardening, I was able to see that eating what you grow is an incredible feeling on top of sustaining your physical health. Not only did I begin to eat healthier, but I have seen firsthand at how changing my diet influences the quality of my life daily. It was great to see how much people have learned and how enthusiastic they were to start growing their own food. At the end, I learned a lot too not only about gardening, but about working as a team as well. It was a wonderful experience and teaching those workshops inspired me even more to pursue my dream to become an environmental educator. We would like to thank Ms. Catherine Davis and the Davis family for giving us the opportunity to receive this scholarship. We would like to also thank co-directors, Dr. Laurie Maida and Professor Ken Trickle for all their support during this project and Professor Judy Marani for her inspiring words about her projects at the studio around the corner and for letting us be a part of it. And finally, a big thank you to Master Gardener Anita Conway from the Cornell Cooperative Extension and the Town of Southeast Cultural Arts Coalition, the Garden Around the Corner, for her assistance with the workshops, providing materials and guidance. <laughs>